Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Up in the hills of Arnes Vale, overlooking the Caribbean Sea, is where you'll find Villa Soleil. Now, Soleil is French for sun, and the unique architectural design of this place ensures it lives up to its name. Windows line every wall, allowing sunlight to illuminate the interior. There's so much to see and do here. There's the two-tiered swimming pool, the prospect of snorkeling within the vicinity of a private jetty, a deck, and there's the courtyard. We'll try to show you as much as we can, but first, let's tell you what's happening in our stories this week. Tobago gets in its two cents as this country prepares for the UN's Small Island Developing States Conference. Techno entrepreneurship. A bit of a mouthful, but the experts say this industry can boost Tobago's economy. We'll tell you why. And the nylon pool makes the bucket list as one of the clearest waters in the world to swim in before you die. Welcome back to Let's Talk to Big One. Thanks for staying with us here in Arnas Vale at Villa Soleil. This courtyard allows you to soak up the sun, feel the rain on your skin, or enjoy the stars. Well, there's no doubt the owners wanted to incorporate the island feel into the design of this villa, but the very beauty and biodiversity it showcases is under threat. Small islands like Tobago face a unique set of challenges due to their size and remote location. They're also highly vulnerable to climate change as well as natural disasters. The United Nations estimates that coral bleaching in Tobago affected an average of 66% of its hard corals in 2005 alone. Now, attempts have been made to respond to these problems, but implementation remains a sore point. That's why a concerted effort has been made to get the views of Tobagonians before this country goes off to a global conference that discusses solutions. More from Davia Chambers. Tobago is only 116 square miles of natural exotic beauty. But come September, our island and country will be amongst other small island developing states that will be the focal point of the world. At the United Nations Conference on Small Island Developing States in Samoa in September. Here in Tobago, issues such as agriculture, governance and the well-being of our people are some of the concerns this island hopes will be placed on the national agenda to take to that conference so that the United Nations can look at specific ways in which Tobago can be assisted. Today's consultation is significant as it marks the first time that formal recognition will be given to the fact that Tobago's developmental agenda and challenges are different from Trinidad. Therefore, it is critically important that every one of us here today participate fully and ensure that Tobago's voice is heard clearly and that our issues enter distinctly in the national debate ahead of the UN Global Conference to be held in Samoa in 2014. The United Nations General Secretary Ban Ki-moon has said more attention needs to be paid to the problems that small island developing states face. This is why this conference wanted to be more than a talk shop, one that deals with finding solutions for countries that are small, remote, and exposed to global environmental challenges. We want to focus on implementation. Tobago has an excellent um, development plan. We recognize it as such. Some of those same tenets which are represented in the plan will also be discussed today and focus on concentrating on how do we implement some of what we said we are going to do so this is the next step. Your recommendations and your ideas out of this morning will also go in to help us because right now we have to plan the final agenda for the States Conference. That's at the end of June. That's the final preparatory meeting. It's a small group of countries, Trinidad and Tobago included, to craft the final agenda. After we, the technical officers, have done with that, it goes now to the political leaders of the country who will gather in Samoa and say, this is what our people came up with, and they will do the necessary diplomatic um, discussions to come up with a final outcome document. But through Tobago's participation in this consultation and all unique issues being placed out there, the island can get closer to reaching the Millennium Development Goals of the United Nations. 
This consultation is a direct result of an agreement between the United Nations and the Tobago House of Assembly last July. It was organized by the Management Services Unit in the Office of the Chief Secretary, the Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development, and the UNDP FAO. The theme for the UN conference is Island Voices, Global Choices. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. The tourism industry is one of Tobago's main sources of revenue, but there are efforts to wean this island off of its dependency on this sector because it's just too volatile. There have been many suggestions, but here's one the Caribbean, including Tobago, might be unable to resist. Why? Because it's a great blend of technology and entrepreneurship. Omadar Mills has the story on the tools and information this island is getting to kickstart this industry. Some of us are never really unplugged whether that connection is to our phones or our tablets. It's why the subject matter of this conference, techno-entrepreneurship, is particularly relevant. It's an area that allows researchers and businesses to use science, technology, and creative knowledge-based resources to help advance their country's economic status. One of the participants in this workshop is the assistant lecturer in the Department of Computing and Information Technology at UE's St. Augustine campus. Salis Lacan says that the workshop will encourage persons to turn their ideas into profitable ventures. I think it's important to learn more about like intellectual property management, you know, protecting your rights and stuff like that, as well as, you know, how you can make these products and ideas more sustainable and, of course, make money at the end of the day. It's not just computers and telecommunications. The technological industry also looks at ways in which people's lives can become better in areas such as medicine and agriculture sectors that are important to the development of Tobago. Dr. Mitchell in his opening address did identify the importance of science and technology, particularly to the agricultural sector and ICT. And as you know, Tobago, who mainly survives on tourism, um, when things go down, the tourists are not coming, you have to focus on other areas to develop and diversify the economy. The 30 participants from the Caribbean region and other countries engaged in research in commercialization and marketing and branding in practice, topics which are expected to help them develop the proper business skills needed for this sector. It is our sincere hope that this workshop will produce a new breed of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs that are bold or who are bold. Entrepreneurs who are knowledgeable. Entrepreneurs who are business savvy and equally important, entrepreneurs who will work within the boundaries of ethics. At the end of the five-day session, the participants were required to come up with and present a business proposal which involves science and technological innovation. I'm Omidar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago is known as the capital of paradise, and its beaches, especially Pigeon Point and Pirates Bay, almost always make it to the must-visit list of places to see in the Caribbean. Every year, thousands come to our neck of the woods to enjoy this island's unspoilt and natural beauty. But here's another boast Tobago can add to its growing list. The nylon pool has been voted among the 35 top clearest waters in the world to swim in before you die. And this is why. With large trees shading the sun, many lounge on the beach relaxing, easing their minds, enjoying the simple things life has to offer. Some, on the other hand, sit and wait for the next boat to arrive to rejuvenate somewhere else. Somewhere where the deep seas are on one side, palm-fringed beaches on the other. But a special place lies in the middle. It resembles a swimming pool, and that's how it derived its name back in 1962. What are we talking about? one of Trinidad and Tobago's most visited attractions, Nylon Pool. This in-sea, shallow, white ground coral pool is best known for one, making one look more than five years younger, and two, of course, it's crystal clear water. Warm currents, under sunny skies, tranquil waters so clear you can see the sand. It is a must-do on a visit to Tobago. These tourists made it their duty to take one of the glass-bottom boats. 
While only the adventurers get out in the deep seas to view the corals, almost everyone takes the opportunity to swim in shallow waters in the middle of the ocean. They can now say they have swam in one of the clearest waters in the world that has been ranked by readers of Daily News Dig as one that you must swim in before you die. Oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, it's refreshing. We're putting the sand to exfoliate the skin, etc. And uh, we are enjoying it. I have gone around the world. It's, it's superb. It's quite superb. And the serenity is quite fine very attractive. Oh, it was wonderful. I feel like 20 years younger. An amazing Nylon pool, oh my God, I'll come again. So revitalizing is this pool that even locals can't keep away. It was clear, yeah, you could see your feet. The city sand was great for your skin. It was real nice, real, real nice. For a long time I haven't been across there, yeah? but it was very good, I enjoyed it. And as they leave, many say they are sure to return to this place, now rated as one of the clearest waters in the world. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, I might come back next week and enjoy it again. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking a break, but do stay with us for details about this island's efforts to raise awareness of autism. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for staying with us at Villa Soleil in Arnas Vale. Now from here, the ocean may seem like a long way off, but you can get a little closer when you follow the steps down to the jetty. And how do you feel about building a fire and roasting your favorite comfort food on the deck below? Or would you prefer to stay right here as the water from the shallow pool cascades into a waterfall? Well, whatever you choose, it's likely to turn out just fine. But the people who sign up for the Unemployment Relief Program, or URP, aren't always dealt the same hand. They're constantly dealing with the stereotype that plagues the program. Many think the employees do very little work and are simply waiting for a handout. But that's not the case in Tobago. To date, the program's workers have been able to improve the standard of living for many people on the island. Here's what's being done. 53-year-old Ulrich Brebner lives in Riceland Settlement, Bethel. He receives public assistance and simply does not have money to refurbish his house even though it's falling apart. That's where the Unemployment Relief Program helps, stepping in to provide assistance with the reconstruction of his house. The building was breaking down, the floor and toilet and all them things, and they put in toilets, back and thing, and they repair the the, the part at, at it, right? Mr. Brabner is not the only person who receives assistance from URP. The program has 50 construction teams that have done construction work for other families, churches, and NGOs. And through the program's furniture shop, many schools have also benefited from the program's work. We have assisted over the years in making furniture for schools. Scarborough Sec, for example, we have repaired their furniture. We have also been able to get big benches for nursery schools and primary schools. And that it has been a long, a long lasting activity here. But the workers of URP also service the communities with retaining walls and box drains. More than this, the program also plays an important role helping Tobago live up to its mantra of clean, green, safe and serene. We have over 50 environmental teams. We have people cleaning the beaches throughout Tobago, Charlottesville, well, throughout Tobago. And that is taking care of the environment. Because if you don't do that, you'd be surprised to see um, the condition of some of these beaches. We also have road teams. 
The workers are also involved in nursery and short crop production in the east of Tobago. To date, the unemployment relief program, which is funded by the THA, has improved the standard of living for many on the island and will continue to be involved in several ongoing projects. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The Secondary Entrance Assessment, or SEA exam, is used to place students in secondary schools throughout Trinidad and Tobago. It covers the national curriculum for primary schools and comprises three papers, creative writing, mathematics and language arts. But before the students stepped into the examination room, they got a pep talk and stationary gifts. Let's join Davia Chambers to find out who visited them. They enter these doors on a daily basis and spend many hours of their life here. But on May 8th, their entrance here bears more significance. It signals the beginning of their secondary school journey. It's here their high school fate will be decided after they sit the secondary entrance assessment or SEA examination. We have been tracking their progress from September until now. Um, many of them have made significant strides. But to ensure they are not just prepared academically, but they're also equipped with the tools they need, the Chief Secretary distributed stationary kits to students around the island. I feel very happy because some of us may not have had the essential tools to use on Tuesday. Well, I think that it is a good choice for like students that can like, purchase items. The students also received encouraging words from Mr. London. And this student says she will remember his advice, this statement in particular. The results don't have to determine where you do, what you do after. Other schools visited were Scarborough RC, Scarborough SDA, St. Andrew's Anglican, and Scarborough Methodist Primary Schools. 946 students sat the SEA examinations in Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're staying with our schools a while longer, but this time we're focusing on a tribute that honors Arthur N. R. Robinson. The former president and prime minister has been laid to rest, but the country, and Tobago in particular, wants to ensure it honors his life and the contributions he made. A library, museum, and ethics center will be set up in Castara, but others have chosen to host events which will encourage our children to learn about the man who devoted his life to his country. Omadar Mills has the highlights of an exhibition put on by the Mason Hall Secondary School. So Bago's struggle is Trinidad's struggle. It is the struggle of the underprivileged in Trinidad. So Bago's struggle for a position in the sun, for attention to its problem, must do good. That's an excerpt from the motion read by A.N.R. Robinson when he began the fight for internal self-government for Tobago and it's just one of the highlights by the staff and the students of the Mason Hall Secondary School at the exhibition they put on to commemorate Mr. Robinson's life. Another item is a poster created by some of the Form 2 students with his most memorable words. I come out with the thing when he had it to defend what he said with the coup and he saw that to attack with full force. Like that one, one of the most powerful speeches he ever gave me. And like we put the positive things that way you say that the speech could do good and the negative side of it. Besides the pamphlets with information for the students to learn about Mr. Robinson's participation in politics, a collage designed by the visual arts students and the teachers has been created. I think it's beautiful because it had a, there's a lot of movement in it. And if, to begin with, you have to move around it in order to see um, what, what it's made up of. And um, every time you go to any part of it, it's totally different, you know? So I, all those various facets end up as though it's a diamond with many sides. Even after the event has ended, the pieces created will be displayed around the school. And the condolence book, which both the students and the public signed, will be given to Mr. Robinson's family all part of the school's way of honoring the contribution made by one of Tobago's brightest and the man who held three of the highest offices in this country, chairman of the Tobago House of Assembly, prime minister and then president of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take another break, but coming up, Tobagonian athletes shine at two regional meets.
You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back. Today we're at Villa Sole, a place with a layout some have described as unlike any other. Bedrooms on the top floor, separate living quarters on the ground floor, and in the middle, where we are right now, you can take a seamless walk through from the living room through to the kitchen. But let's leave it there to tell you about efforts to raise awareness of autism on this island. As you may know, this is a lifelong developmental disability that manifests itself during the first three years of life. The rate of autism is high in all regions of the world and it impacts children, their families, communities and society. This condition affects the brain's functions and makes social interaction difficult. The UN has found that in many parts of the world, people with this disability are denied their fundamental human rights and face discrimination and exclusion. Tobago wants to change this and has started by raising awareness. The persons you see here are part of a walk which took place through the streets of Scarborough, autism, a lifelong developmental disorder that affects the brain and can occur regardless of race, ethnicity or social background. The chairman of Autism Tobago, Leela Rampasad, says their organization knows of 20 children with autism on the island. And although it's a relatively small number, the organization is on a drive to increase the public's knowledge of this disorder. We started to go around to schools, to PTA meetings, um, churches, and had meetings to try to sensitize the public. And we thought we were ready this year. And together with the Division of Health and Social Services, we put on the walk, which was very, very successful and well attended. Autism Tobago has been in existence since 2010. It came out of the chairman's desire to help autistic persons and their families deal with the condition, especially after she found out that her third child is autistic. Mrs. Rampasad says that early diagnosis and therapy are important for both the child and family members. No, there's no cure, but early intervention would assist. So if at two years you start to get the behavioral therapist and they start to show you what to do and, and they tell you what to do and all of that, it will help the child. And the organization is determined to provide support for those with autism. We have workshops, we have seminars, um, we have therapists that we bring down from foreign and that we do programs for the children, for the, well, actually for the parents and then we have workshops, different times for children, sometimes for parents, sometimes for teachers. Besides organizing the walk, the Division of Health and Social Services provides public assistance as well as disability grants on a case-by-case -case basis for autistic persons and their families. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago continues to invest heavily in its young athletes. And this year, our sportsmen and women showed this island that the investment is paying off. The athletes worked so hard, they impressed the selection team for two major meets. Today, we're singling out their performance at the Games considered on par with the World Championships. Do not be intimidated by any other Caribbean national. That's the advice the 14 Tobago athletes got before they left for the 2014 Curifter Games in Martinique. And they did not disappoint, because they were able to bring home nine medals out of the 25 won by the country. One of the winners is Chelsea James, who's won gold in shot put girls over the past three years. On behalf of all the athletes of Tobago Carifter team, thanks for all the support that you have given us over our preparation time to go to Carifter. And hopefully next year we will come up with more medals. Umari Benoit, Kenisha Williams, Zakia Denoon, and Andwilia Wright are some of the other athletes who medaled at the Games. And they could not have made it this far in their journey without the support of those closest to them. We believe firmly that you have contributed significantly in the nurturing and preparation of these athletes so that they can represent us well. But their laudable performances were not without some difficulties which they were able to overcome due to another fundamental aspect of their athletic lives. From day one, everyone was very tired. So these athletes that perform so well, they perform under great stress. And this is where training comes in because with the, with, the, with the former training that they would have before going to character, actually help them to perform at the level at which they perform. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport supports the athletes by providing them with coaches, equipment and other resources 
so that they can continue training and representing the island well. I'm Lois Vincent for Let's Talk Tobago. But Martinique wasn't the only place Tobagonian athletes held their own. They also showed that they can compete with the best in the region when it comes to mastering a game that demands quick reaction and fast play. Omadar Mills tells us more. These boys and girls won the four teams which won bronze medals at the Regional Table Tennis Championship in the under-15 and under-18 categories. The head coach, Dexter Abbott, says despite intense competition in Cuba, he's proud of what they were able to accomplish. We trained here and we went out and battled and, and these children did well. Um, actually, Tobago had the whole under-15 boys team, captained by Benoni Daniel, and on that team was... Joshua Maxwell and Jackie Welsh, and, and they had the honor of beating other Caribbean countries. The competition also provided the eight Tobago players with an opportunity to build on their skills and table tennis experience. To be in such awe and such an environment of discipline, of, of simplicity, of tolerance, uh, it will all go good for these children's future. And out of the event, there's hope of collaboration between this island and Cuba, whose players are regarded as the best in the region. There are coaches in Cuba um, willing to come to Tobago. And um, with the help of God and the Assembly, I just hope that these things could, could materialize in the near future. The Tobago contingent was part of a national team that competed against seven other Caribbean countries. They were supported financially by the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. On Saturday, May 3rd, this country said its final goodbyes to one of Tobago's brightest sons, Arthur N. R. Robinson. The former Prime Minister and President was given a five-day state funeral, but many have publicly said more needs to be done. Mr. Robinson is credited as one of the co-founders of the International Criminal Court. He campaigned and fought for the revival of the then defunct Tobago House of Assembly and was one of the earliest voices pushing for this island's internal self-government. So today we're asking, how can Tobago honor the legacy of a &R Robinson? This is what you said. I think that some institution of learning should be named after him. Our memorial or something of some sorts in his honor. I think um, an educational institution of some sort because he was a stickler for education. Giving a, a monument, some kind of statue, you know, something in, in remember from Sarah Benson. They're supposed to get a big statue for A&R a &R Robinson. Well, I think, you know, they should, you know, every year they should celebrate. They should keep a memorial service and think to remind people about his excellence. I find that if he did something in the East can be named after him. A statue could be built with his name. Um, I mean, that would be a good way to remember him always. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Colleen Holder and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with a final look at Villa Tully.